Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the differences between studying abroad in Spain and being an auxiliar in Spain. I want to start off this video by saying that each person's experience either studying abroad or being an auxiliar varies significantly depending on which city they're placed in or studying abroad in, their housing situation, the length of time that they're going to be in Spain. Some background on my study abroad experience. I studied abroad in the spring semester of 2017 in Madrid, Spain, and I was there for about six months. My program was an exchange program, so students would go from the university I studied at in Madrid to my home university. I know a lot of study abroad programs provide housing with either an apartment, dorm style, or with a host family but our program in particular didn't. So that was kind of a struggle, not going to lie. We were looking for a few months, very confused, didn't know which areas to live in and how much the apartment should cost and all of that. So for our personal experience, we did have to pay rent every month, but I know a lot of programs make it so you pay at the beginning or you pay a one-time fee and everything's provided, like your housing, your food, and your excursions and all of that, but that's more for short-term or summer programs, I think. Let's jump right into my five top differences that I personally found. Number one would be the visa process. When you're studying abroad, if you are staying for less time than three months and you're from the US, you do not need a visa. For me, I did need a visa since I was staying for, my program was five months and I ended up staying for six. There was a lot of paperwork involved with getting this visa. I had to make an appointment with the Spanish consulate in Houston. Since I'm from Texas, you are assigned consulate for your region. I had to organize all of my paperwork, my acceptance letter to the school. I think, I don't think I needed a background check for this visa, but there was a lot of paperwork. Once I got all of that done, you go to the consulate, you apply for your passport, I mean for your visa. They take your passport and they'll mail it back to you or you have to pick it up in a few weeks. So all of that had to be done, but for being an auxiliar, you do need a visa, which as you guys probably know from some of my older videos that I didn't know that we needed a visa and I ended up having to go back to get that visa. But anyways, you need a visa, make your appointment right now if you're accepted. For this visa, since you're staying for longer than six months, it is a different type of visa, so you're gonna need even more paperwork. So there's, I think you need to get the Apostle of the Hague, which you have to do, I think you need to send it to the something in Washington DC. It's super hard to do and super confusing. and. I actually, when I went to go get my visa, when I went back to the US, I tried to get the Apostle of the Hague and I got something that was called Apostle of the Hague. When I went to get my visa, they told me it was wrong. And I also got the doctor's note. You're gonna need this doctor's note that says that you are free from these contagious diseases or something like that. And they also said that was wrong, but then they told me that I didn't actually need those because the visa that I was going to get was the same as the one that I got when I was studying abroad because I left and came back so I wouldn't be in Spain for more than six months now. But the visa process is different. And then once you arrive in Spain when you're studying abroad, that's it. You have your visa and you're good. You don't need to get any other um, documentation done. But when you're in auxiliar, the party's not over for another month or two. So you're gonna have to get your NIE which actually is on your visa, so I don't know if you really need to get that because you have it, but you do need to get your TA, which is your Tarjeta Identificación de Extranjero, which is like your foreign identification card that sh uh, shows that you're living in Spain. And to get that, you need to have your empadramiento, TASA something, which is like this form that you print out, a contract that says that you're accepted to be an auxiliar. You know what? I'm gonna list everything down below for you guys. So you're gonna need to have all of these things and then you also need to make your appointment for the TA and sometimes they're hard to come by. So make it as soon as you get into the country because you need to get your TA within the first month of staying in Spain. 
Otherwise, they might not grant you it and you're going to have some problems because your visa is going to expire prior to your leaving date. And if you're here with an expired visa, you could get deported, which almost happened to me. So don't let that happen to you. Learn from my mistakes. Lots of paperwork, lots of bureaucratic things. That's a big difference between studying abroad and being an auxiliar. The second thing I want to talk about is making friends. So while studying abroad, I came with one of my best friends. We lived together. It was great. We went to school together. We met tons of people from all over the world because it was a study abroad program. So there were people coming from Australia, from the Philippines, from other parts of Europe, Canada, all these places. And we all kind of had this group, you know? So we made friends. There were lots of organized excursions for Erasmus students, people who are studying abroad, and yeah, we just kind of hung out with them a lot. But when you're an auxiliar, you're moving to usually not a big city and you're not going to be in the center. Like, yes, you could end up in Madrid or you could end up in Sevilla and like living in a very, or Valencia city, and you could be living in a very vibrant and social atmosphere, but you could also end up in a really small pueblo. I'm like in Benidorm, which is not the smallest place I could be, but it definitely was not that easy at the beginning. I didn't really have friends for a while until I met Rona and Hannah. Y'all know Rona and Hannah. And then my roommates came and everything got better, but for the first couple weeks, I was alone. I moved to this place that I've never been to before in my life. I was going to work and work was okay, but I didn't hit it off with people at the beginning and like I didn't really make friends immediately and it's hard so I was using the Facebook groups to make friends and I would go to Alicante on the weekends and meet people and everything which was great and a perfect way to meet friends so definitely you're gonna have to make a bit more of an effort if you're an auxiliar to make friends and get out there because you could end up really isolated and not that happy. Definitely I'd say that was a big thing just making friends and you're gonna have to branch out and probably talk, speak more Spanish you might make more Spanish friends than you did when you were studying abroad. So that's another huge part of my experience that was very different from studying abroad. Branching off of that, my third difference, would be where you live. So like I said, in my study abroad experience, I was living in the heart of Madrid in Malasana, which is a super cool area of Madrid. I definitely think you guys should go there if you're ever in Madrid. I was super central, everything was near me, also, the airport was right there, and there was always something going on and new people to meet. But here in Benidorm, it's kind of a different type of city, so it's there's lots of skyscrapers and everything, but the population is about 40,000, and it's dead during the year, and then in the summer, it picks up and more people start coming. There's a lot of old people here, I'm not going to lie. Like, there's not much of a social, vibrant, youth full atmosphere. That's a big difference. Also, the closest airport is in Alicante and train station. So traveling to other places from Madrid can be, I mean, not from Madrid, from Benidorm is very different than Madrid. The flights are more expensive. The trains are more expensive. They're harder to get to and all of that. That's a really big difference from studying abroad because usually when there's a study abroad program, they go directly to the hub, so it's like Madrid, Sevilla, Santander, Barcelona, Valencia City, but then with the Auxiliar program, it's all over Spain, and most of the schools are going to be in Pueblos. Even if you're living in Madrid and you're an Auxiliar, most of the time your school is not going to be in the center of Madrid. You're going to have to take a bus or a train and commute like quite a while to get there. You could live in the center but you will have to commute outside of Madrid to get to your work every day, and that could be three or four days a week. Don't expect to be living in a big city because that's what I expected. I, When I was signing up to be an auxiliar, I was like, I'm gonna sign up and I'm gonna put Madrid as my first option, and then I'm going to end up in Madrid, or I'm gonna end up in Sevilla. And then even when I got my acceptance letter, it read Comunidad Valencia. So I immediately thought, Valencia city because I didn't even realize that Valencia had a state like there's 
a region of Valencia. And when I read further along and it said Benidorm, I never heard of Benidorm before getting accepted into the program. So I was like, what is Benidorm? And I Googled it and I was like, what is this place? I'm gonna have to live here for a year. There's this series called Benidorm. It's like a British series. I was very concerned with how this place would be. It's a very different type of city. I'm just gonna tell you that much. My fourth difference that I wanna hit is the financial aspect of studying abroad and being an auxiliar. While being an auxiliar is super cool and fun and you don't work a full-time job, I'm working 16 hours a week, you're still working, you're still having to pay your bills, pay rent, buy your groceries, live like an adult off of the money that you earn. Here in Valencia, we get paid a little bit higher than the other regions. Madrid and Valencia get paid a little bit more, but we also work a few more hours a week. But the other regions get paid, I think, 850 euros a month. You're gonna have to factor all of your expenses into that. Well, when I was studying abroad, I came to Spain, like I didn't work, but I worked before, came to Spain with this amount of money, and I had scholarships, like a lot of scholarships for studying abroad. So I had this much money factored in my rent and everything, but I was also there for five or six months, and I knew that was the amount of time I had. So I was like, I'm gonna go everywhere. I'm going to travel every week and I had class two days a week. Everyone in my study abroad program, we were all like booking flights. We were in class on our laptops, booking flights. And then we leave class either that night or the next day, we're going to Morocco or Amsterdam or Paris or London or wherever. We were just constantly traveling. While here in Benidorm, it's like I am traveling quite a bit, but it's not like every weekend I'm going to hop on a plane and go to another country. I haven't really left Spain since I got here, sort of, apart from, so basically when I first arrived in Europe, I came to Spain and then I traveled a bit in Spain, went to Germany for a week, came back to Spain. After that, I traveled in Spain a little bit, but I was mostly here in Benidorm. Like I went to Madrid, I went to Alicante, Valencia City, and I was gonna travel more in the winter, like during our winter break but then I had to go back to the US but when I came back I stopped in London and then started traveling more but then I just did London and then I came back to Spain so I've been primarily in Spain for two reasons you have to factor in your expenses into like what you get paid so budget you have to budget really hard because you don't get paid that much yes you can travel if you like put it aside rent isn't that expensive here and things are for the most part cheaper than the US but it's still difficult to do. I am going to Berlin this weekend, so I'm super excited for that. And then I, I will be traveling during Semana Santa, which is like a two to three week break. Like you have to be more responsible and like, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm going to work. I'm, I have like a schedule, like a, what is it called? I'll put it here, I forgot the name. You have to be more responsible when you're an auxiliar than when you're studying abroad, you're kind of just chilling and you're like, I'm in Europe for, six months, like let's do everything I possibly can, but I'm also here for a longer time. Like I got here in September, I'll probably be here till July or August. So it's like a year in a place, you can't burn yourself out all at once. That's my financial advice between being an auxiliar and studying abroad. My fifth and my final piece of advice is the lifestyle, which I kind of mentioned in my fourth tip with financial stuff is that you are here for a longer amount of time and so you do have more time to play and just like live life like live in spain rather than studying abroad where it's like you're going 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 you're not actually experiencing the spanish lifestyle fully because you're only here for such a short amount of time whereas right now it's like when i work i'm not working with other auxiliars i'm working with my co-workers who are spanish who speak spanish who are from here and then the people that I meet in the streets and like when I'm going grocery shopping or to the gym or whatever they're Spanish like you're living in Spain and you're staying in a place for a long amount of time I do feel like you get a much more authentic experience as an auxiliar than you did when you were studying than I did when I was studying abroad also because I'm living in a smaller city Benidorm isn't the most Spanish city like there's a lot of influence from 
England and Britain and stuff, but I am living a more Spanish lifestyle, if that makes sense. And no, that doesn't mean I'm taking more naps because I take the same amount of naps as I did when I was studying abroad, but I do feel like my life is slower paced than it was when I was studying abroad, partially because of the financial as aspect and then also because I came to Spain to live in Spain. I want to experience it more and be a little bit more chill. I'm also a little older, like not, not much older, but I'm older in the sense that I graduated university and I'm an adult, but I'm still fun. Some Facebook groups for auxiliars and I posted in a couple to see what other people thought about their experience if they had studied abroad in Spain before they became an auxiliar. And a couple of people responded. For one example, she's from the US and she studied abroad in Sevilla. And she said while she was there, she was living with a host family. She had homework, but barely any. And it was very chill and relaxed. And she kind of just enjoyed it there. But now as an auxiliar, she said, it's definitely work. Like we do work even though it's not for that much to pay for like for example if we want to go on trips like I said I'm not traveling as much as I was when I was studying abroad I do have to plan a lot in advance I have to budget really like make sure I'm gonna have enough money for everything and then also like for the future months because we haven't been getting paid like punctually as we should so it's like sometimes we might not get paid for a week or 10 days longer than we thought. We do like side jobs like private lessons and things like that to make extra money so we can afford these trips. And another girl said that she studied abroad also and she was living with a host family and I feel like a lot of people when they do come to Spain to study abroad live with host families which my experience was different. I was living alone. but. Most people probably live with host families, so that would be a huge difference financially because they would provide you with food and you don't have to pay rent and then also like having to take care of yourself and everything. Yeah, she studied abroad and then she said like she's living in Madrid right now as an auxiliar and she had to find her housing by herself and move everything by herself and it's, you, it's really a different experience because you do come to Spain alone as an auxiliar unless you have a friend and you happen to be placed close by like I do have a few friends who are auxiliars in Spain right now that I knew from prior to being an auxiliar but one is in Sevilla one's in the in Mallorca and like another is in Madrid and they're everywhere so I haven't seen them like I saw my friend in Sevilla when I first arrived in Spain back in September and since then we've been trying to meet but we can't because it's like hard to travel and we don't have enough money and things like that so while when you study abroad you're coming with people who you know for the most part you are doing this by yourself so you're gonna have to put yourself out there more and be a little bit more organized on your own both experiences are very different but also challenging in different ways I hope this video was helpful to you guys if you have any more questions about being an auxiliar or studying abroad in Spain because I can also do videos or give advice on that since I did it. Let me know in the comments below and if you found this helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be doing more videos on being an auxiliar here, also more vlogs. Let me know what you guys think. Bye!